Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Duxy Gaming and the next episode of the Layback Exile series. Now, I know I said the last episode was going to be the last one, so I was burnt out. But after a break, I'm actually keen to carry on the SSF journey. So we're going to get back on the Explosive Arrow character and start making some progress. Uh, so at the moment, I'm running a six link tabular uh, with just a short bow that I had when I hit my first map. So what my goal is for this episode is hopefully to farm some maps where the short bow six link car can drop the porcupine, which is things like uh, gardens, courtyard, uh, maps like that. The div car can drop. I'll use scarabs whenever I get them. And that's really my goal for this episode. I also need to complete Uber Lab because I keep forgetting to go in a trial uh, to actually get the currency to run the lab. So I need to get that. I mean, lab will be easy. It's just the fact I keep forgetting to run the trials when I find them in the maps. So they're the two goals for this episode. Get uh, Uber Lab done because that's going to up my defenses a lot and start trying to farm this short bow because if I can get the six link away from my chest into the bow, it frees up the chest slot to not even need to be a six link. So I can craft a really, really decent chest uh, with Eldritch currency to hopefully go on the way to getting uh, spell suppression capped. So if we get the Uber Lab done, which is the elemental Aegis protection, then get uh, capped on spell suppression then get some more armor and evasion on the gear it's going to make me much much more tanky and i think i'm going to enjoy the game uh, and this playthrough a little bit more so at the moment i'm a little bit squishy but i am only level 88 and i'm taking on like tier 16 maps so i do know there's a lot of progress to go on the character to make it feel good uh, but i'm keen to get stuck in so without further ado let's jump into the episode and see how i get on with the goals so the first thing really in line for this episode is to get lab done. I wasn't expecting any particular difficulties other than getting through the trap sections because I don't have a huge amount of regen at the moment, uh, but we navigated it fairly easily, picked up some dark shrines along the way, nothing really of note on there. So then we're into Izaro's chamber, kill him fairly easily, and then go through and I'll take uh, the fourth ascendancy, the elemental Aegis one, just to give me a lot more protection from elemental damage. Mapping wise, I'm trying to do expedition whenever I can. I'm taking all the nodes on the skill tree. So I am seeing expedition in quite a few maps. We've had a few Tusion uh, currency to spend, which has helped top up stuff like Scours, Alchemies, uh, Varlovs, things that I'm starting to run out of because I'm corrupting uh, my red maps. Uh, decided to then attempt to six link a chest. Didn't have a huge amount of fusings, but thought. Let's give it a go. I don't want to save up like a thousand fusions for them to link it in like a hundred fusions. Um, so I've got not exactly a great amount of fusions, but enough to give a good go. And super, super lucky, do it in two to three fusions. Uh, started fighting guardians and conquerors. So the footage here is the first elder guardian kill. Feels fairly comfortable. The good thing about this build is you can just lay the totems down and then just spend time dodging the enemies. What I might need to do is look at the skill tree and take some nodes for Totem Life and Totem Ellie Res, which are down the bottom uh, in the Totem nodes, because my Totems in some fights are literally instantly dying to like burning ground or elemental damage over time. They're getting absolutely nuked, and it is hard in some really juice fights to keep them up. So that's something that I probably need to look at. And so I've got all of the Conquerors killed. We found maps for three of them, and then the last one, which I think was Hunter, turned up in a Kirak mission because I've been saving all those up and still got a few left to run. Uh, and what I'm really using them for is to get my unique map so that I can get my Atlas completion up, uh, which is now well over 100 uh, and looking pretty decent. So with the Conquerors down, it's time to go on to Cirrus. And again, the fight is fairly comfortable. I think one thing I will probably do is just not bother with Utility Flask because they're not really up for very much of the fight. It's hard to get them refilled. So next time I do serious, I might go in with three life flasks, all with corrupted blood immunity. Because the one death I took against Cirrus was when I got tagged by his die beam, got corrupted blood, couldn't remove it, instantly died. Uh, but one death I was happy with. I've not done the fight for quite a while, especially not on a build like this. I've done it mostly on like a lightning strike melee character. So to do it on this build, it just needed to, to learn the play style a little bit and how to do the encounter. But it's fairly straightforward. Also got my first explosive arrow gem up to 2020. Use the Vile Orb again, super lucky, went to 2120. So if I do manage to get a bow, I'm going to be in a really good position because I also managed to craft uh, an amulet with plus one to fire skill gems. So at the moment that puts my explosive arrow at 22. 
If I can find a six link bow with plus two to socketed bow gems, that takes explosive arrows to 24. And that's going to be a massive, massive damage increase. Um, DPS as it is, is fine. But I'd like to try and get almost overkill damage on this so that because they stay alive, the totems, when you die, it's basically going to mean I can do almost every encounter as long as the totems stay alive. So that's definitely the next thing I need to do. Probably not going to target farm it though because I've got loads that I can be doing in terms of, um, you know, need to do legion, need to do blight to get all these different things together. So I don't think I'm going to focus on getting uh, the short bow just because the maps are really horrible. So I'm probably going to be relying on, you know, stack decks, div card drops, and then maybe harvest gambles to get it. Or we might get super lucky and get a six link bow drop. Uh, but that, that, that's fairly unlikely. Um, and that's it for this episode. That's kind of what I did. Other than the highlights that I've shown, it was really just general T16 mapping, uh, try and get a, an income of scarabs going from the Eater of Worlds passives and just go on from there. Um, skill tree in terms of Atlas tree hasn't changed. It's still expedition, strong boxes, along with essences and shrines. And I'm taking all of the ones for expedition, even the ones that just offer chance for expedition, because I don't know how much scarab supply is going to be. So if I can get up to sort of 18% chance, I think it is that you can get to have an expedition in a map, then that's really, really handy. Uh, so that's it for the footage. So I'm going to jump to the outro where I'll just summarize uh, what's been accomplished and then go on really just to say what the next episode is going to be and what my next goals are. Overall, really, really fun and successful session, which was covered over two um, evening sessions playing. So I'm just going to recap what's gone through over in the footage, just so everyone knows where we are if they skip to the end of the video. So got Uberlab completed and got the Elemental Aegis sorted out. That makes me feel a lot tankier. Got a very, very lucky six link chest. I had a few hundred fusions, so I just decided to try and get lucky and six link the chest, and it did it in like two to three fusions. I've now used nearly all of my essences to recraft my gear to get spell suppression capped. I've also made sure they're high level armor evasion bases so that then it adds a decent amount to my grace and determination and just makes me feel a lot tankier. I have recrafted a new bow because the other one I was using uh, was pretty outdated. So now I've got a better bow with a better attack speed, really high ellie damage to attacks. The idea is still to get a six link bow. I'm just having no luck trying to get the div cards or finding one. Uh, drop on the ground which is pretty unlikely we've started killing some guardians uh, so went on killed cirrus regarding t16 mapping it feels really really comfortable bosses go down quick enough clear still feels okay made it up to level 92 i'm not sure i'm going to get much further than that in the next few episodes because i'm planning to just push content and i don't expect to be able to do some of it deathless i'm still learning the play style uh, in regards to drops i had a rain of splinters jewel drop I have put it in and tried it and it does make the clear speed a little better but it seems like it lowers the single target quite a bit and lets us just a placebo but it seemed when I put it in for a few maps bosses took longer to die so I've taken it out for now. If I do ever get a six link bow that I can put plus two on then I might put it back. And then the last item we had drop which is Sod's Law I've given up the spark build I had an Aegis Aurora drop which is really the key item I was looking to get for the spark build to try and boost survivability up. So maybe towards the end of the series, we might revisit the spark build when we get enough currency and gear to be able to make it tick. But for now, I'm going to carry on with the explosive arrow build. Sessions, uh, I'm playing as regularly as I can. It's maybe one every other day. So video wise, just so there's a lot of content to bring everyone, probably only going to do it once a week, maybe two a week if I play um, more than every other night, because I still want to carry on the Mage Blood series. And that takes a lot of time to farm um, all the log books and all the maps to get the currency needed to do the Gwen and Gambles. So that's it for this video. Builds coming along absolutely amazingly and I can see why so many people leave started with it. It's so smooth, you don't need a lot of gear. It will easily clear the Atlas on not much more than a six link and some self-crafted gear. Um, so for now, I'll just say the POB is in the video description for where I am at the moment. If you see anything glaringly obvious for those that have played this build that I've done, please let me know because it's I've kind of not really necessarily followed the guide. I've just looked what other people were doing. So there might be some things I'm missing. I might have pathed really badly. There might be really important those that I'm missing. Um, so please let me know if you see anything. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you all in the next video.